I don't know how to start or end videos, so hello, I am Odds. But you can read that. Uh, I just watched Digine's video on characters that she relates to, and um, I think she separated it into categories, which normally I like to do too. It was like characters she relates to, characters she aspires to, and characters she wants to fuck. Uh, I started to do that, but then realized that I don't seem to be constitutionally capable of differentiating between, I mean, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to remember characters that I would be interested in dating, uh, who I also would not want to just be, which maybe is a problem with my dating models, but I feel like they're there are characters and people that I would theoretically want to date who are not just what I would want to be personally, maybe. Um, but that was too difficult to separate. So instead, the categories I made were uh, characters that I relate to, like actually, and then characters that I relate to uncomfortably. Uh, or rather, characters that I relate to actually or that I wish I related more to, so the aspirational ones and the current ones. And then the separate category is characters that I, that are uncomfortably relatable. Uh, because I kept finding myself running into those and finding myself not wanting to include them, which seemed like a good indicator that I should probably, <laughs> that that would actually be worth talking about. So right now we have an absolute muddled, chaotic mess. Uh, the prompt was supposed to be anime, and then I was like, oh, I'll just do everything, you know, just book characters, movie characters, fucking whatever. And then I was like, no, 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 we'll narrow it back down to anime. But I didn't end up narrowing it until after I had thrown in a couple of non-anime characters. So apologies. Sorry, not sorry. Think, who do I start with? <laughs> I totally want to, like, be optimal and, and have a cohesive order to this. Well, let's just start with Rincewind, because he's on fucking top, and he's one of the, um... Well, you'll notice, like, basically all the anime here is from, what, like, the 90s, probably? Some 80s stuff, uh, maybe early 2000s. Actually, I don't know when, like, Gurren Lagann came out, but uh, I kind of... <laughs> those are my reference points, so it might be a little dated. But Rincewind is the hero of uh, the early Discworld novels. I think he's in, like, three of them. Um, so, shit, now I'm on the spot and I have to actually talk. All right. The thing about Rincewind is that he is a massive fucking coward. He's just like, danger? Fuck that, I'm leaving. And he just mostly wants to be left alone to his own devices. I think he wants to be a wizard. Oh, another problem we're gonna have in this video is that I have memory, like, my, I have, my memory is like a sieve. I retain virtually no information. So no matter how obsessed I was with something at one point, um, I could probably memorize the names of all the characters and keep those in my head pretty well, although we'll see how that pans out. But I'm not going to remember the details of the story because for some reason that's never important to me. I'm just kind of now going to be going off a vibe I get and my vague recollections. So feel free to correct me in the comments when I get everything wrong. But um, yeah, I am and historically have been extremely risk averse. I've been working on that and definitely anti-anxiety medication has helped tamp that down significantly. Uh, but Rincewind was always extremely relatable to me with his just like, I'm gonna nope out of every, you know, part of it is that he has no shame from what I recall. He's just like, I'm not even embarrassed. I'm just leaving the situation because it's terrible. And I really respect that. <laughs> um, all right. Let's do Jughead next because he's the other non-anime character and also one of my very, very earliest influences. Jughead motherfucking Jones is like the prototypical stoner. I mean, probably not prototypical because Archie Comics is not like that, that old, I guess, like what, the 50s? But um, yeah, at the time when I was, not at the time of the 50s, in the 90s when I was a kid and reading these comics, I didn't know what a stoner was. So all I knew was you got this guy, he really likes to eat. He doesn't give a fuck about anything going on around him. All these other teenagers have their petty problems. Archie with his too many women and whatever. And then, uh, what's her name? Ethel was always trying to, like, get into Jughead's pants. And the poor man just wanted to eat hamburgers and be left alone. And I don't know. I just always thought that was incredibly based. He doesn't care about what society expects him to care about. He cares about food. And that's about it. 
And he's not ashamed of his priorities. He's not pressured into like being a ladies man or anything like that. He's not trying to be macho. He's just, I need water. <laughs> yeah, so I think so far the, the common thread in these two is just a complete lack of shame about who you are, even when your preferences are strange or silly or not even that good. Uh, I should clarify also, I don't necessarily feel like I am super like these characters. Uh, most of them are fairly aspirational or like parts of them are relatable. But Jughead has always been like a goal, like to have that level of zen. And I feel like I've uh, pulled that off in terms of like, ever since I was a little kid, I just couldn't give a shit if like, it, it, it is it is and has been possible to hurt my feelings, but you can't really do it by being like, oh, that thing you like is bad, or like, uh, you know, like by, by judging my preferences. Like, there's just no way to embarrass me that way, I don't think. I mean, you can certainly give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, so now we got Moose from Ron Roll One Half. He definitely fits into the based weirdo sort of category of just like extremely over the top in everything he does. I wouldn't necessarily say that Rincewind and Jughead are over the top, but he's definitely one of those people who's just fundamentally unaware of how other people perceive him uh, or doesn't care. But I think in Moose's case, he's just got no idea. Um, mind you, it's been about 20 years probably since I've watched or read very much Ronmo One Half, but from what I recall, he's uh, a magician who uses like his sleeves to store weapons. Um, and his whole thing is that he's obsessed with Shampoo, who he's supposed to be engaged to, but that dastardly Ranma has stolen her from him because, you know, it's, it's not quite a harem anime, but like every guy in the series, except for Moose, is in love with Akane, Ranma's fiance, and every girl in the series is in love with Ranma, Akane's fiance, and then everybody hates everybody else because of this. Uh, everybody hates Ranma <laughs> because of this, I should say. Um... Yeah, so I I wish I could remember Moose a little bit better. I think the other thing that really resonated with me was that he was one of the few characters I had seen in fiction with really terrible eyesight. And I probably got into Ronmo one half not terribly long after I got, or no, I think it was around the time I got glasses because it may have been my very first pair of glasses when we went in to like choose the frames. I specifically chose perfectly round frames which everybody was like, oh, you look like Harry Potter, because that was, it had just started to become popular around then. And I was like, fuck that. I'm trying to look like an anime character. Like, my aesthetic goals were like Moose and uh, fucking Melvin Umino from Sailor Moon. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, baby weeb. Um, in fact, Moose was my very first cosplay, I think. It was definitely my very first cosplay where like there was any sewing involved where I like went to a convention I went to anime expo for the first time in 2001 I was like 12 years old and I was dressed like moose yeah he might have been why I grew my hair out too I don't know because I can't think of any other reason that I would have wanted boob length hair before I had boobs I guess but whatever um yeah so moose similarly fucking weirdo fucking based He's definitely, I feel like, a lot more neurotic and, I don't know, like, has a lot more issues, I would say, psychologically, probably, than these other characters. He's not necessarily as aspirational, but I do wish to reach that level of just not giving a fuck. Uh, now, Ranma, let's ignore Ryoga there, little Pichan. Fuck him. I always hated Ryoga for some reason. I don't know why. I bet if I were to watch the series again, I would find him the most relatable, but I'm not sure. Um, I wasn't planning to include Ranma in this, but it occurred to me that like probably Ranma is a big part of the reason I was really obsessed with Ranma one half. Oh, I mean, it might have just been the gender bending because like the idea of being able to switch your sex at will or against your will, but like rapidly throughout the course of the day was so cool to me. And the, the weird social interactions that came about as a result of this. I never understood why Ranma didn't like it, but I guess I had some sense that like, oh, he's very macho and this like undermines his machismo. Uh, but in the end, I did end up including Ranma in this because uh, of how much I hate Akane, <laughs> um, I think. Because one of the ways that I was figuring out which characters I feel the most like was by looking at the characters that I find the most irritating. And the characters I find the most irritating are pretty much 
exclusively the ones that are demanding, that place demands on other characters uh, or want them to change their personalities. And the thing that I realized is relatable about Ranma is that he's just a teenage boy trying to live his life and every fucking person around him wants something from him. His dad is dragging him all over the fucking planet to do all of this martial arts training that like, I guess he enjoys, but I don't think he's quite as into it as his dad wants him to be. Um, And then his dad and his friends, whatever, you know, his dad and his dad's friend both decide without consulting him that, oh, by the way, you're going to be getting married to some girl you don't know. Like, you have a fiancé now. Um, And then, oh, by the way, we're going to now move to the town that your fiancé lives in. You get to go to school with her. And then he shows up, and through no fault of his own, he sees her naked uh, because I think she, like, walks into the bathroom or whatever. She thinks he's a girl. It's a long story. In any case, she immediately, they get a fall on the wrong foot. She thinks he's a pervert, and she hates him, and she's jealous of his superior martial arts skills, and she treats him like shit through the whole series. (laughs) Um, Sorry, I have feelings. Um, But yeah, Ranma's running theme seems to mostly be that he just wants to be able to make his own life choices and stop having all of these things thrust on him. He doesn't want other people to have control over every aspect of his life, and they do. They have control over every aspect of his life, more so than, than... normally, I guess, would be the case with a 17-year-old boy, um, including his gender. These people, if they want to, they can just change his sex like that by splashing some water on him. So, relatable. And I feel like he handles it all pretty well. Like, he's relatively chill given the circumstances. It's just, you know, it gets to him. It's too much. Um, This is where I'll start to get into the more uncomfortable characters, where I am less happy (laughs) to relate to them. Uh... I've actually seen Gurren Lagann more recently than any of this other stuff, but I don't remember it very well for some reason. Let's start with Kamina, because he's the one where I was just like, Kamina's fucking goals. I know he's an idiot, but that's actually a personality type I extremely appreciate. The person who is so persuaded by and and confident in, and I guess like zealous, um, when it comes to their goals, that they just don't care about anything else, but like in a good way. It's not like he'll sacrifice other people, but he's willing to sacrifice himself, um, which may be stupid, like, but I just, I identify with that and I very much uh, appreciate it when people are willing to just, like something gets them upset enough or they take something seriously enough that just, they're ready to just say, fuck it. Like, I'll die on this hill. Like, absolutely. Kamina is extremely based. I guess that's what I just, I just want to be based. That's all. Um, I wish I had his balls because he's baller. All right. That brings us to the slightly less desirable uh, Gurren Lagann characters. Um, Roshu is also a zealot from what I recall. I actually don't remember his arc terribly well, except doesn't he like go from being, like, grouchy, fucked-up child who's actually really, really, really a good person to, like, was he, is it, like, he's, like, an ultra-consequentialist and he's just willing to sacrifice everybody to save, not everybody. I just remember there being some sort of, like, oh, I'm pretty sure you're evil now, aren't you? And, um, I just recall him definitely being the type of evil that I could see myself being under the correct circumstances. Um willing to just make judgments about like, all right, we're just sacrificing these people then because, you know, it's them or everybody. But he's just like so not fun and I don't find that appealing. And I think that plus the like probably kind of evil thing are the reasons that I find the relatability a little bit uncomfortable. I don't have a color to pull on. A little bit uncomfortable. Um, Then there's uh, Shimon, Simon, whatever. I can't, I can't call him Simon. They call him Shimon in the anime. So if they wanted to call him Simon, they would have called him Simon. Anyway, um, I don't mind relating to Simon as much, but the reasons that I do are things about myself that I want to change. Like, I'm thinking about Simon before the time skip, because I don't really remember what he's like after. I feel like he grows up to be more like Kamina, like sensible Kamina. Um... But before the time skip, you know, he's just, like, eager beaver and really likes digging, which, like, I appreciate a person with strong interests and, um, like, lacks confidence and looks to a leader to follow. Like, he really respects big brother Kamina and will do whatever he's told by Kamina. And that's super relatable. Like, I always 
want <laughs> I want a cult leader to follow, but not a cult leader. I want to be the only member of the cult, I think. Because once there's more people involved, then you can tell that it's creepy. Yeah. Still, I'd much prefer to be a Kamina <laughs> than to be a, a Shimon. All right, you may have noticed a pattern so far. I believe every single one of these characters is a dude at least 50% of the time. So now we'll bring in the ladies. This is from another anime I literally have not watched in uh, like probably 20 years. So it's mostly gonna be based on vague recollections and vibe. Uh, we got Ryoko on the left and Washu, her mom, on the right, sort of her mom. It's like a clone situation, don't worry about it. Um, both from Tenchi Muyo, or I guess the whole Tenchi series, because I feel like there are a bunch of different ones, different manga and stuff. This was another scenario where I found the other female love interest. I guess maybe there's a harem, but like the main one, what was her name? The purple haired girl? I can't remember her name now. I think it starts with an A. But I really hated her because if I recall, she was like one of those holier than thou, but also really demanding people. And Ryoko, meanwhile, is just like, just ganky and aggressive. And I always thought that was really cool. I think maybe when I watched that, I was like, I don't know, like I wanted to have that same tomboy vibe probably. Um, Washu, I seem to remember just having that sort of like chaotic mad scientist type of energy, which I also really appreciate because like, I don't know, there's just something about chaos that's delightful and I don't know I hadn't really acknowledged that about myself until recently because normally uh and hmm, well I guess we'll get to those types of characters later but like honestly probably the the fictional character closest to me up until fairly recently has been C-3PO not an anime character so I didn't include him but with that as your baseline it might be a little weird that I I'm so into characters like the crazy chaotic ones but I guess that's why they're aspirational so I now organize them into categories that seem to be emerging. We've got the, uh, well, naturally, I didn't organize these guys, I guess, but we've got the Genki aggro chaotic category. People who are, I guess, like kind of aggressive and bold and not afraid to tell you what they want, or they're just fucking weirdos, but like really loud about it. The flamboyant ones. Uh, we've got the, the too cool for you crowd. Mostly they just want to be left to their own devices. I think that's the, the common theme. They don't want people to impose on them <laughs> or to try to kill them. Uh, and then we've got these little categories that don't have anything else in them, but the loyal shy guy, I guess, loyal slash shy and the cerebral types, which honestly, I might put those in the same category. Uh, but I feel like those are two very different characters. So um, all right, I'm gonna go through, ooh, now we got the, uh, Durarara characters, which I have not seen all of Durarara yet, but it is one of the anime series I've watched most recently. Um, I tried to only get sh images from the actual series, uh, and, like, the official products. If I somehow managed to get fan art in here that it was just, like, so accurate I didn't register it, please let me know so that I can credit you, because, like, I don't want to be a dick, Jesus. Anyway, um, right, so we got, these are some characters from Do Ra 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 who uh, resonate in various ways. First, uh, we have Goals, Shizuo, who I don't even know if he actually, I don't know how to describe, I don't know that I relate to him at all. I just love him so much, and I think it's because, I mean, I guess I do relate to him. I think he's another one of those characters who mostly just wants to be left alone. But on top of that, he wants other people to be left alone because he's very protective and very... But I think he also just starts shit sometimes. I can't remember at this point, but I thought that he let other people start shit and then was like, absolutely fucking not. And then would just like rip telephone poles out of the ground and batter people to death with them. Not to death. Maybe to death with them. Um, but that level of uh, well-directed aggression is very appealing and something I'm probably not terribly capable of being a tiny, tiny person. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a vibe that I really enjoy and that I would like to capture as best I can. I would like to at least be the small dog with big dog energy, like she's, well, I mean, he's, anyway, yeah. Um, the other two characters are definitely more of like an uncomfortable relate type of thing. Henri, um, Honestly, it might just be because she's like the quiet girl with the glasses and the giant tits, which like, I feel like they don't reference a lot in the show, do they? I don't know. 
but yeah, I was, that was basically me. <laughs> um, and I always worry that that's how I come off to people. Uh, well, I guess I have like two parallel worries. It's like, I worry that I'm, I'm just going to be like the shy glasses girl with the giant titties or like the really fucking annoying person who won't shut up and has a really irritating voice. Like those, <laughs> those are the two ways I present, I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, Henri's got her, like, big, dark secret thing, and I feel like I've never been able to relate to anything like that. But definitely her her level of reserve and her inability to connect with people, how she just sort of... I don't even know how she gets attached to the group. I can't remember, but I feel like she just kind of gets dragged along because somebody as passive as she is isn't going to make friends without them coming to her. And I have always been that person, even now that I'm much more sociable and less... Cripping, cripplingly socially anxious, I still have trouble approaching other people and taking any kind of initiative when I want to make friendships. I fucking hate it and I need to work on that and that's why I don't like relating to Henri. Um, Mikado, I guess, similar because he's pretty shy as well, but the bit that I really like and relate to, I guess, about him is that he's, like, he's built a fucking network and I really like the idea of, like, getting all the people I know from all the weird places that I know them and like getting them together and like yes I absolutely want to start a gang but like a nice gang a nice gang of happy clown people and friends um but yeah Mikado is just like pretty pretty chill and nice I guess I don't know I need to watch the rest of the series to see what happens with that <laughs> Ayane best girl it's maybe a little I don't know if, if it's super weird that it's like I tend to have like I tend to confuse crush feelings with just like, oh, I really relate to you feelings, but like Ayane is so perfect and I love her, but also I think she's the most relatable character I've encountered probably in any anime or any manga or possibly like pretty close to any media. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I guess I'm starting with Ayane because she's awesome. Uh, which sounds so narcissistic. I don't know how to... Like, so she... She's super shy, and also she looks like a fucking, like, 10-year-old, which, okay, that sounds, like, super preferred if I'm like, oh, I've got a crush on her. I mean, it's still creepy if she's in high school, which she is, but uh, let's not worry about that. She's a cartoon character. It's fine. I don't actually like people who look like this in real life, um, <laughs> but she, um, she is not taken seriously by people around her, and she's also just not noticed, I feel like, by people around her at all. She tries really hard to be good at trumpet. Is that what it is? She wants to be in the orchestra. She's really bad at playing her instrument and she feels like she's dragging the whole class down and like she should just leave or not, not at least not be in the rehearsals or like the, the concerts because she's just going to ruin it because she's so bad at her instrument. And so she like takes all this time to try to get really, really good at it. And it's hard. And I don't know, she's just really sweet. She tries really hard. She's really hard on herself. And she gets, like, no credit for it, basically, unless you as the main character decide to be really nice to her, which I did, obviously, because she's my favorite. Um, whoops. Yeah, so I think it's that, that combination of working really hard and feeling like you're not necessarily getting payoff for it, um, but not letting it destroy your spirits. I don't know. She always looks really grim and sad, but she's not really. I don't know. Yeah, what? it's interesting that it is harder to pin down things about a character that I find more relatable. Or maybe I just find that I'm projecting a lot onto her. I'm not sure. Also, I think, like, honestly, the haircut and the clown cheeks and the round face are just, like, perfectly tailored for, like, screaming, like, this character is relatable to you personally sort of thing. So it could just be that. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, like, I've been consistently mistaken for somebody much younger than I am for ever, I think. Like, and I was just, like, a late bloomer into, not, I don't think I was physically necessarily, but, uh, like, I hit it for a very long time. Um, and, like, just definitely emotionally, I was a very late bloomer. I have always felt like I'm a good five years or more behind all of my peers in terms of emotional development and, like, 
basically everything except intellectual development where, you know, now that I'm hanging out with nerd circles, I feel like an idiot again. But growing up, it was always like, you people are all really stupid and you're all making really bad decisions. And it's odd to me that I didn't include any characters who were like that, except possibly Naoto. Uh, I haven't actually gotten too far in or far enough in the game to really know what Naoto's deal ends up being so much. Um, but she's actually sort of like an uncomfortably relatable one because I find her kind of irritating and pedantic and boring. But the reason that I like her is because she's living the fucking dream of being a cute girl who's disguised as a cute boy. And also, like, she's, what, uh, I think she's a high schooler, but then she's got a job as a detective somehow. And it's basically, like, many of my interests, you know, like, uh, camouflage, I guess, or, like, confusing people about my identity, plus being a detective uh and i guess prodigy like i don't know that always was one of those like out of reach but somewhat relatable type of tropes um so yeah that's why i included naoto and then of course there's kanji which it feels weird to say he's relatable because he's so fucking macho and so i mean i don't yeah he's pretty macho actually um he's interesting because he hides his it's probably his sexuality, too. They're not quite as explicit about it. I mean, the Sada thing is pretty explicit. But he's, like, concerned about the fact that he likes soft girlish things like knitting or crochet or whatever. Like, shit like that. And, like, making cute dolls and things. And actually, I think that is pretty relatable. Because, like, even though, you know, I was born a girl, uh, I've always felt, like, not like I had to hide it, but, like, I didn't relate to femininity in any kind of way and that when I pursue feminine hobbies I almost have to like laugh it off or play it off as something weird because I don't want to give people the idea that I'm more feminine than I actually am when I don't really feel like a girl in any meaningful way. Um, so I think even though I haven't, <laughs> I've, I've not, I don't think I've ever been the type of person who like hides aspects of my personality and my interests intentionally. Um, it is relatable that Kanji is sort of like, no, I'm trying to project this thing. And if you know that I like crocheting cute little dolls, it's going to fuck everything all up. Um, yeah. And he's just also kind of, he's got this like sweet, the sweetness and this naivety almost about him. Like you sometimes forget that he's younger than the main character. Like, you're his senpai in the game. <laughs> and so even though he seems like your scary big brother, actually, like, he kind of looks up to you. Oh, wow, is this the first time I think all the characters that I find relatable are girls? I'm actually going to do them in order of appearance in the game. Because uh, I haven't finished Persona 5 yet. I finished virtually nothing, so this is no surprise. <laughs> you may have noticed a theme. Uh, but I had the experience while playing the game of just, like, Makoto showed up. And I was like, oh, fuck. This is the most relatable character in this game. She's like the fucking goody two shoes, rule following, boring pain in the ass who's like, you guys shouldn't be doing that. Like, I'll totally snitch to the principal and that kind of shit, which is like to a T what I was growing up. Um, and I love that she has this character arc where she essentially realizes that like the authority is fucked and she becomes a rebel and like joins your gang and shit. And it's pretty great. But, um, yeah, the levels on which I relate to her are mostly uncomfortable and I find her annoying and dull. Not like terribly annoying, but just like kind of uncomfortably close to home and not what I want to be, uh, even though she definitely improves. Um, so that was what was happening when, or that that's what, you know, went through my head when Makoto f first showed up and when her arc first started happening. But then Futaba showed up and I was like, ah, oh, fuck Makoto, she's dead to me. Futaba new best girl. Um, and I guess I will admit a huge part of this is the glasses because there is no easier way to make me like kind of take notice of a character and be like relatable, relatable character than by giving them bad vision. <laughs> uh, so Futaba's whole thing is like she's traumatized and she's neat because she's traumatized which is not actually relatable to me at all, other than neat lifestyle, I definitely relate to. Um, I'm not full neat, but like for a long time, <laughs> I feel like I've been on the borderline. Um, but she, I think what's really relatable about her is um, 
how clinical she is when she talks about everything, really. Um, I mean, it's definitely like hard to get through to her to get her to talk to you at all because she's so traumatized and all that shit. But when she actually does sort of open up, she feels very distant from the material and or the, the topic of conversation. And that's super, super relatable. Like her manner of communicating, I think, is pretty relatable to me. Um, I'll say, you know, she likes video games and shit. Like, yeah. And she's not like particularly feminine, at least I don't even trust my own read on, like, what femininity is because I have such a poor grasp of gender and gender, like, any anything to do with gender. Fuck it. I don't really understand unless it's, like, really extreme and obvious. Um, but, yeah, she seems much more tomboyish, which immediately I gravitate to. Uh, and she also has kind of the same thing as, like, oh, yeah, she's a don't give a fuck, please go away character for sure. Um, then naturally, we move a little farther along in the series or in the game and then Haru shows up, and suddenly I'm just like, Futaba's dead to me, Haru's new best girl. Because Haru is just, like, a perfect fucking angel, and I don't necessarily relate to that. It's like, I, I can only aspire to such levels of purity. Um, I guess I probably had, I don't know. I think I've always been a little bit too cynical to ever properly be a Haru type, but she's really naive and even when she knows that there's, like, horrible shit happening often to her, she just doesn't let it... She doesn't let it really affect her the way she treats other people. She's always extremely concerned with how everybody else is and that she's not imposing on them. And, um, yeah, I guess she has, like, a weird level of independence. And she seems fairly shy, but more than that, I think, just, like, very sweet and unsure of herself. Yeah, not wanting to be a bother. I feel like I'm getting less coherent as I go on. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure her whole thing is just like, oh, sorry, I don't want to bother anybody with my small problems. I'll take care of it. And that's very relatable, except in her case, it's like, oh, you immediately have a troop of friends to just solve all your problems for you. If only. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate her positive attitude and her just like total lack of cynicism. But right, this is a video on relatability and not what I like. Although I feel like there's not a huge, there, there has, it's hard. I don't think that you can really, really separate characters that you really like and, and that, I get, yeah, it's like, it's resonance, right? If you really like a character, they resonate with you. If you are like a character, they resonate with you. And I feel like those are just two aspects of that resonance. Um, so in Haru's case, even though I feel like I'm, more cynical than she is. It's like she's the best parts of the disproportionate amount of optimism I think that I have. Hard to, yeah, have to chew on that one. And then let's move on to, okay, Steins Gate. I just started watching Steins Gate with some of my friends on Discord and it's been really fun so far. I missed the last couple episodes. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, we're only a few, uh, I've only seen a few episodes of Steins Gate, Steins Steinsgate so far um and I'm I keep debating whether I should have included that one character the trap character <laughs> um whose name I can't fucking remember and who I keep getting confused with Mayuri but the characters that I did pick okay first of all there's fucking Daru look at the look at this perfect this perfect specimen I don't know what this practical typing is I got this picture off Pinterest um yes yeah, so Daru is a hundred percent one of those like based like he has what he likes and what he likes is anime and fan service and you know basically a lot of the things that I like although I imagine he's significantly more of a pervert but um particularly things that I liked when I was younger and when I didn't know other people who liked these things. Now most of my friends are into it too, and we're all just like giggling about how like, oh, we are all Daru. He's the most relatable character in all of anime. Actually, though, he probably is. Um, uh, I think one of my friends who said he was relatable described him as fucking disgusting, and I was like, how dare you? Daru is the best of us. Uh, and then you have Mayuri, who is also the best of us. Uh, she's, I guess, more of a Haru type, uh, Persona 5. Um, what I like about her is her naivety is almost unbelievable. 
or I guess is unbelievable. Like, can she really be that stupid? Am I going to find out that she's actually not that dumb? She's probably traumatized. I probably am going to find out all kinds of shit when I watch more of this. But um, it's almost like, I guess I almost read her as committing to the bit. Like, I don't think it's possible to be stupid enough to not realize that there are bad things and bad people or people who do bad things and that kind of thing. But it is possible to refuse to play the game that other people are playing and to refuse to acknowledge that it's even being played. And that's something I really appreciate and relate to a lot, just fucking opting out. Um, And maybe in her case, she's opting out of reality. And maybe in her case, it's not even voluntary. And she is just really stupid. But whatever it is, she really, really resonates with me. (laughs) So now now I'm going to do the Fire Emblem characters because I have been playing a lot of Fire Emblem lately. I'm not even sure if I like the game, but I've got like 70 hours logged, which is more than almost any other game I've played, I feel like at this point, Uh, except for like Crusader Kings probably, which also I don't know how I feel about that game. I think in both cases, it's just an addiction, basically. Um, There's probably really good things about both games that I just don't grasp because the way I play them is basically grinding. Um, Anyway, unrelated, different topic. Ignatz is the first one I'm going to mention. Is it, Am I pronouncing that right? Ignatz? Ignatz? Ign- anyway. Um, he first came to my attention in like a piece of fan art when I had um, a pale green bowl cut and the the fan art was of him painting something and I was just like, somebody just drew me. What the fuck is this? Like, I didn't realize he was a guy. Uh, I mean, like, do you? No. Like, he does not. Anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, so he... I was basically primed to like him. Like, I I determined that he would be my favorite character, and I knew there was no getting out of it before I even picked up the game. So, of course, I picked up the game, and sure enough, yeah, he's... I think he is by default my favorite character. There are others that I might like more, but I just could never admit that to myself. Um, He's another one of those characters. He's much like Ayane, where he tries really hard. He wants to fulfill other people's expectations of him and pursue his hobby. Um, I guess in Ayane's case, she's not necessarily... Her way of her, of fulfilling other people's expectations is by trying to get better at her hobby or by opting out um, and avoiding having to ruin everybody else's fun with her hobby. Uh, and Ignatz, meanwhile, spends like half the game trying to decide, like, I really like painting. I'll try to do it in my free time, but I'll make sure it doesn't infringe on my duties of being a soldier and make sure that it doesn't, like fuck with my parents' expectations because I have to run their business and all that. He's really hard on himself and he's really kind to other people. And that is the most relatable thing of all. Uh, But so yeah, another, you know, nice, hardworking (laughs) character. Uh, Bernadetta is like manic pixie. uh, I don't, she's relatable in her weirdness and her desire to just be cooped up in her room working on projects and her fear of other people. You think I'd remember her backstory a bit better because it was pretty like intense and moving, but um, I'm going to assume that her fear is about like rejection and manipulation. I feel like it was way worse than that though. Um, I don't know, maybe it blacked it from my memory. In any case, uh, she's like a really exaggerated version of like how having to deal with other people, especially on their terms. Like if they come to my door and they expect something from me, like that's fucking intense and I can't deal with it. Like I can't even respond to text messages in a timely fashion. I think it's um, that in combination with the fact that she's sort of shameless about it. I mean, she's definitely deeply ashamed, but she's also just like setting a boundary and she's just like, fuck you. I don't care if it's weird. I want my alone time, which is all of the time. Okay, and then there's Linhart, who's uh, much more of your typical based, I have my interests, I just want to sleep and read stuff, and I don't want people to bother me, and his entire life is just structured, I feel like, around, no, he doesn't actually even bother to structure his life around avoiding having to deal with people. He just straight up, well, he kind of does, because he'll just straight up fall asleep in front of them. Um... So this was especially relatable to me when I was in school um, because there was like a lot of pressure and I went to like Catholic private schools 
where like you have your uniforms and then on top of that you have your dress code and then you have all the expectations about how you're supposed to behave and I wanted to follow all of those partially because I like like I kind of agreed with some of the rules that adults had but also I just got to a point where I was like fuck this I want to be able to do my own thing but I don't want anybody to give me shit I don't want to have to deal with getting into trouble so I'm just gonna lie low do what they tell me to do and just make it through school and nobody's gonna bother me and I'll be perfectly happy that ended up being like really fucking terrible I really should have rebelled but you know whatever what are you gonna do um, and then hidden back here someplace is, uh, Marianne, my problematic fave. <laughs> not really. That is not what that term means. But, um, Marianne is the relatable one who I'm like, I don't want you to be relatable. She's kind of fucking annoying because she's so self-sabotaging because she, like, her boundaries are so intense that, like, she sets boundaries for other people around her. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Like, I'm sure she's trying to protect herself from other people, but the extent she goes to, she's protecting other people from herself, which, I mean, like, her backstory, I guess, involves her being potentially unlucky or a danger to people, or at least that's what she believes. Um, but it does kind of feel like an excuse to just avoid people. And, yeah, just that, that shyness and that, like, just fucking... She's just, like, horribly hard on herself. That's uncomfortably relatable, and as much as I like her, I also am just kind of like, uh, I'm kind of over, I don't really want to see any more Marianne, it's too, too much, too soon. Alright, I'm gonna do Ash and Anchors next. I forgot, he's another one who's not an anime character, technically, he's a video game character, although they did make that one Star Ocean anime series that looked really bad. And there's a manga, which has really good art, but I've never read it, because it's in Japanese and I can't read Japanese yet. Um, Star Ocean the Second Story is one of my favorite games of all time, and I've been fucking obsessed with Ash and Anchors since it came out, pretty much. Um, He's, I think, damn, like, all the characters I like are basically the same. He's another one of those guys who's just trying to live his life. He's got his his plans, you know. He's like, I'm, I'm going to go around adventuring. I'm going to go slay this two-headed dragon. And there's my five-year plan, I guess. And everybody around him just fucks it up. And they, uh, they either place demands on him or more likely they, you know, walk in and distract him while he's trying to slay the dragon and then somehow he's magically fused to the dragon and now he's just a poor sap with two dragon heads sticking out of his neck and he can't like how fucked up is that it's really fucked up um i think even before that his character he's supposed to be just like an incredibly unlucky person which i don't like i haven't had the most terrible luck but just somehow that that is an extremely relatable type of archetype what am i saying yeah ashton is definitely in that sort of like please leave me alone category i just want to be i just want to be able to do the things i want to do without people like fucking trying to kill me or bossing me around so this is uh ise on the right and enju on the left from please save my earth the premise is that you have a bunch of uh aliens i guess who got who died and then were reincarnated as Japanese high school students. So on the left is Enju, who's the alien, and then on the right is Issei, who's the modern reincarnation. Uh, and her whole thing is that she got reincarnated as a dude, which um, one of the things that's interesting about Issei is that uh, he, and, and I'll call him he because uh, he doesn't really seem to mind his gender. He's not once he realizes that he was a woman in his past life, he's not like, oh shit, I have to like do something about this. Or like, he's not even like, oh, this explains everything. He's just sort of like, oh. And the main issue for him is that Enju was in love with another character whose name, I can't remember. Any, there's a lot of characters, especially since they're all doubled. Um, but Enju was in love with a character who's been reincarnated uh, into another high school student who we say is like good friends with. And when he realizes that he used to be in love with this guy, he realizes that he's in love with him now, except now this dude is straight and he wasn't interested in him in the past life and he's not interested in him now. Anyway, that was an elaborate explanation, I feel like, for... So I'm sure to some extent what's relatable about uh, Issei is just his sort of like, the gender is not the issue here. Uh, the Iranian yogurt is... Wow, not the context I expected to be thinking about that in. Um... 
And uh, Issei is another one of those characters who's uh, shy and sort of reserved and retiring, which I feel like none of those describe me to anybody who knows me now. I probably don't seem like any of those things, but that's definitely my, like, one-time baseline that I've been, like, struggling against. (laughs) Um, The thing that's relatable to me about Issei, I think, has been a vibe more than anything, but I'm pretty sure the specific thing is that he doesn't want to cause anybody any trouble. And so the fact that he was a woman and is in love with his friend is just like, oh, he, he doesn't want to burden his friend with all of this. He's like, I just have to deal with this on my own. And so he, he does, basically. I don't, I don't know. I haven't finished the series, but it, it kind of just seems like he's one of those characters that not... He has friends and stuff, but he's not the one that everybody is paying attention to. He's the guy off on the side who's just sort of minding his own business and trying to get by and can't necessarily rely on anybody. I don't know. Wow, that's rough. That's that's uh, that's some shit. <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, yeah, even though he's that sort of shy, loyal type that I keep finding embarrassing to relate to, I don't know why... He seems a little more self-possessed, maybe, than some of these characters, even though I don't know that I agree with his decisions. He um, seems to be more intentional and specific and and more functional. It's not like he's not able to function in relationships normally. It's more like he just wants to conceal his affection for this one character. Um, And he's able to feel anger, which I think a lot of these shy characters normally don't seem to be able to do. Uh, Obviously, we have to have Sailor Moon in here, because that's fucking, like iconic. I probably should have actually, like, Usagi on here, um, but I almost feel like surely everybody relates hardcore to Usagi. Also, I don't necessarily relate to her. Yeah, I almost feel like she's a little more... I don't know if she's aspirational. Like, I was never that dumb or that bad at school or anything like that. I am a glutton, though, and I'm clumsy. But yeah, for whatever reason, Usagi was not, maybe because I tend to ignore the main character. I usually don't relate to the main character because I've always felt like a background character. Oh, wow, that's depressing. But uh, definitely like in middle school, I remember one of my friends and I, um, <laughs> we wanted to like make a website or something. Uh, something to do with uh, the theme was that we were both invisible like, we felt like nobody else in the school noticed us and that nobody had ever really noticed us before in our lives. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably... Shit, what was I talking about, though? Oh, yeah, I think that that might be partially why I'm so drawn to side characters as a rule. But also, like, pff, protagonists are usually just kind of boring. They're usually a little more generic. Anyway, um... Ami and Makoto from Sailor Moon. Yeah. Okay, so I think these were both my favorite characters in the show when I was, like, nine years old and, like, when I first watched it. Um, Ami I really liked because she's, like, the big-time nerd, which I very much related to and still relate to. Um, But now, in retrospect, I'm like, shit, this poor girl was just, like, cramming. And for what? Fuck school, guys. Don't go to school learn something. Uh, anyway, yeah. I think Ami was one of the first times I was aware that girls could have short hair, and I immediately, like, latched onto that, and from the time that I saw her, I basically was like, I want to have short hair. I want that haircut. And looking at it now, her hair is not even that short, but, like, this was kind of how I had the, the notion in my head of, like, a pixie cut, and so, well, hey, my hair's pretty short now, actually, but, uh, Yeah, and so sadly that that resulted in many years of mom haircuts. Um, I don't know if hairdressers thought that I was like, I don't know what hairdressers thought, but like, man, that was rough. I looked like a fucking nun in high school. Not in a good way. Not in a sexy way. (laughs) Um, Anyway. uh, Yeah, so Ami was relatable, but like, again, she's one of those, like, I'm embarrassed to admit that she was relatable and she's definitely less so now. Uh, Makoto was definitely more of, um, aspirational. (laughs) Another one of those, like, aggressive, ballsy, confident girls who's very tomboyish. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do these last two together because I feel like they're in the same category of person, and I probably should have included Space Dandy here, too, because he's also that, uh, character type where they're just sort of, like, flamboyant and... (laughs) confident and aggressive and ridiculous 
uh, Lena Inverse from Slayers, which was and still probably is one of my favorite anime series from like the 90s. Although for some reason it never really like it didn't doesn't have the lasting popularity that some other shit has had for some reason. And then uh, Lupin, I'll admit I've only really seen Castle of Cagliostro movie, which is very sanitized Lupin. And then I have the first couple manga where I'm like, oh shit, he's a like a horny son of a bitch. He's a disgusting, disgusting man, but I love him. Um, I think it's part of what I just love about him is his aesthetic. I just love like sideburns and like big ears that stick out on the sides. Um, yeah, anyway. Okay, yeah. I definitely idolized Lena Inverse when I was in like middle school. Um, God, I hope that probably that probably contributed to why I used to kick one of my friends in the balls and he'd let me. I don't know why he would let me. He just turned it into a comic thing. I feel really bad about that. I'm sorry, dude. Um, anyway, yeah, so she's really aggressive and uh, tends to cause a lot of collateral damage everywhere she goes. She's also really uh, self-conscious about how she's perceived, which I don't think is what caused me to be like caused me to relate to her at the time because actually at the time I was um I was obsessed with slayers before I hit puberty and so looking at my mom I fully expected to grow up to be like a tiny skinny woman with teeny tiny tits <laughs> and this was not the case at all um but yeah, somehow, like, I just thought I was going to grow up to look like Lena Inverse, and I was pretty stoked about it, and it, it didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, what the, I don't know, I'm like losing my train of thought now. She uh, she was super self-conscious about having really small boobs, and characters make fun of her th for it throughout the series, and every time she gets really angry and violent as a result, um, which I always thought was funny. I didn't really find that relatable, because it has always been pretty hard to make fun of me. I don't, I kind of either feel like, well, either it's true, in which case, okay, can I do something about it? I should do something about it if it bothers me. And if it doesn't bother me, then it's fine. And if I can't do anything about it, then it's fine. Or it's not true, in which case, who gives a fuck? But yeah, I guess Lena's got that chaotic, aggressive energy that uh, appeals to me for some reason. And definitely Lupin does as well. More chaotic than aggressive, I would say. Um... But they, I guess they've both got this sort of thing where they play by their own rules. They don't give a damn what other people think at all. And those for sure are goals. All right. So I guess uh, what I ended up with through doing this exercise was three major categories of personality types that I think if you mush them all together, you end up getting something approximating me. Um, We've got the whole category that I labeled the loyal slash shy slash cerebral category. Uh, the nerds, sometimes the quiet zealots, the people who think too much and follow the rules to an embarrassing fucking degree. The people I mostly would rather not relate to, um, but I know that they have really good qualities, some of them, that I just don't acknowledge. Also, I think this one is probably the disproportionately feminine category. I wonder how much of this I just associate with femininity and then I'm like, oh, therefore it's not cool and so I shouldn't be that. But gender stuff is hard to disentangle from, like, misogyny and, uh, misandry, isn't it? Anyway, um, the next category is the maybe somewhat aspirational, but probably the most truly relatable out of all the categories, the sort of just, just please leave me to my own devices. Why would you make demands on me? Uh, I don't really give a shit what you think about what I'm interested in and how I live my life and all that type of thing. Just don't cause trouble for me, please, type of characters. Most of them are pretty fucking based, if I do say so myself. Uh, and then we got the probably more aspirational, um, chaotic, ganky, aggro sort of category. Um, I don't necessarily want to actually be aggro. I don't want to... I mean, as, as much as I delight in, like, the aesthetics of destruction and fire and explosions and such, I don't want to actually cause them. No property damage or loss of life or anything on my watch, please. Uh, but... I like their feral energy. I guess that's what it is. Is it? Fer it's kind of feral energy, a little bit of that. And um, similar to the, like, I don't give a fuck, please go away people, but 
I feel like they directed more outwards. They're like, what happens if you break the please go away people? <laughs> or um, in some cases, if you just have somebody who's like that, but also with really low IQ, maybe. <laughs> but definitely, this is the vibe I'd like to approach a little better. There's also some uh, intense aesthetic shit going on, I feel like. Mostly moose. Most Mostly it's moose and his magic tricks. So, I would be super curious to see which characters you relate to and if anybody else does videos like this uh and if i got anything horribly wrong or if if you're like oh shit actually i think that too that would be really cool to hear about and to know so yeah that's that's all i got all right see you later dudes <laughs>